Hi guys, we're just gonna jump in because I want to, I'm excited. This is a board from Salvin and Wilbur, um, designed by them, being vended through Salvin in the EU and Novel Keys in the US coming soon. First off, this is a prototype, keep that in mind. The salvation is Wilbur and Salvin's attempts at making a good budget-friendly board, trying to make a Tremont good. So stock, and please correct me if I'm wrong, either Wilbur or Salvi, please correct me, please correct me if I'm wrong, but this will come with stock, the board, obviously. Um, I believe this color that they did for me is custom. It's not one of the group by colors. Um, it will come with a weird flex PCB from Wilba stock. I don't know what color they're going to do, but it comes stock with a weird flex PCB. And it comes with an FR4 plate stock. I'm going to put on the Sal Salvin hoodie because it's way cooler than my current hoodie. Dude, this hoodie is soft. Look at this. Look at this. Ay Wow, Apiary finally looks hip. All right, so the case, including the PCB and plate, the grand total is going to be 295 USD. So that's for the case, the plate, the PCB, the feet, and the bits. All right, let's unwrap the PCB. So they did send me the red Weird Flex PCB. I'm, a, I'm a probably not going to use that. But just to show you guys, this is the PCB that I believe it'll come with stock. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. They haven't decided on the color for the salvation. I'm a liar, but these are in stock at salvin.com. But this is at least the type of PCB that'll come with stock. All right. And then here's the plate again. So they went ahead and... So this is FR4. Oh my god. Holy... That is a pretty color. That color is so good. Oh my god, look at that ass! <laughs> nice. Alright, so this case does require a significant amount of assembly. Before we get started, it's, it's going to take us a while. Um, But before we get started, I do want to give you guys a look at all the things you were asking for. So here's the USB port cutout. Let me get as close as I can to the camera. There's the internals. One side, that side, booty booty, other side, and the actual butt. So we're gonna get started on assembling this baby. I might fuck this up once or twice. Like I said, this is very unique and interesting in the way that it mounts, which is a great thing, but you know, I'm getting the pre-production build guide and even though they worked really, really hard on it, Part of the reason why we do pre-production build guides is to just see what needs to be specified for idiots like me. So, so I believe first we're gonna go ahead and prep these. They they call them leaf springs. Those are not leaves. That's metal. This is not metal. This is FR4. I know it's shiny. It's nickel plated, but it, as you can see from the side, it is FR4. So we're just cracking this along the mouse bites. We're gonna go ahead and just use my little like emery board um, and file those mouse bites to make sure that they're not sticking out. All right, so we've got these prepped, nice smooth edges, no mouse whoop, no mouse bites. So we're gonna take our M two, three screws, our little baby standoffs, and our um, what Salvin's about to call nipples, but are called the rubber standoffs, and we will put those on either end of the case. Oh. Before that, we need to put in our little pour-on pads. You see those little dots right in the middle? So those are to help with the pour-on the pour-on pad alignment. Um, so we're gonna just place this right on top of that little dot. Is this a tray mount? See, that's a loaded question, technically, but it's definitely mounted differently. It's gasket tray mounted, bro. It's like gasket leaf spring tray mounted. Now, we are going to prep these leaf springs. So eight of these. Call me. Say something. Something. Let's go. So, how do I assemble these leaf springs? Put a rubber standoff on uh -huh. on top of one end. So on top so of the screw, off. right? Like where yeah, the screw hole goes. Well, There's no screw. Yeah, in just it, put that. Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. That's right. One end. You just you just put it on so it's. All right, and I do that for exactly eight. Exactly on the end. Correct. Yes. Excellent. For eight, and then for two more of them you put that threaded spacer on because okay. that's what the piece so two of them get to. the threaded spacer eight of them get the rubber standoff that is correct all right thank you very much one two three four five six 
Will it be possible to use a different mate leaf spring material to increase decrease flex? That is definitely possible. So one of the ideas I had about uh, for this board was that people can experiment with the leaf springs if they wanted to make their own out of other materials or even out of FR4, they could make them themselves. But FR4 was what we designed from the start to use because it's cheap and it's something different. All right, so I have two with the standoffs, a bunch with the rubber bits. Hey, did you use the M2 by three screws? I understand. So. Yep, this is M2 by four, so these are the M2 by threes. So the two more M2 by threes are what you're going to use to screw the PCB into those. So now you just mount all of them to the case with the M2 by four. Like this? Well, with the nipples facing up. Nipples facing up, got it. The ones with the rubber pads go where the pour on strips are, and the mm -hmm. ones with the standoffs go where that they aren't. And you forget about the two on the sides. I mean, I designed it to be compatible with most. 60% PCBs. The idea behind this is to support the PCB on the top and bottom edges with flex. Those locations are where the rubber standoffs go, where the, where the PCB rests on the rubber standoffs are places on a PCB that are free of switches and other components. So they were chosen very carefully to be you know, compatible with uh, to go in between switches depending on layout. So this should be this should work fine for 7U bottom row or 6.25 bottom row. So they are angled so that where they're mounted is also between switch rows. So that there's clearance between those screws and the PCB. And that's how you make make it work. Those length. It's it's as long as it is in order to give the right amount of flex. And so you had to sort of angle them to make it fit. All right, so are we good to go as far as the case goes? Can I just build up the PCB and stuff? Yeah, that's it. All right, excellent. Now, somebody was asking, can you snap out the the middle to make it half play? Uh, so I just wanted to address that really quickly. No, would... because you need, the, you need the screws to mount it, unfortunately. No, so... no, no. What do you no, mean? No, you can't. You need that to mount it, don't you? That inner part of the plate. <laughs> you see how I've got cutouts around the, the yeah. alphas? Like, you could cut through those little tabs. I designed it so you could just get a Dremel out and cut through those little tabs. So Salvation's designed around experimentation. If you want to muck around and do your own plate or hack this plate, go for it. For Salvation, Ooh, you guys going to keep it standard layout only. Yes. Um, well, okay. The, this, these are basically the options that come with the PCB, but you can drop in your own PCB. So whatever layout is supported by a 60%, you can do. But for the stock kits... Yes, and even, I mean, the plates are going to be, like you see here, very simplified, I guess. It's, it's not a universal plate for sure. So the PCB supports more than what the plate does. If you really want to do a 6.25 bottom row or ISO or something like that, then you can get your own plate made to suit. Or you can get out a Dremel and cut Wait. the plate up. Oh, the Don Salami says we're misunderstanding. We want to see Wilbur's bottom. Well, check out my OnlyFans if you want to. Does the PCB rest on those pins? Yeah, it rests on the the rubber standoffs, which are then on top of flexible leaf springs. So the whole thing is flexible. Which are then on top of poron strips. The poron strips actually just stiffen up the leaf springs. Otherwise, it would be too flexible. And it would bottom out. Oh, the probably the number one disadvantage is that it creates vibration. Like the flexibility that you get, like the more flex that you give it, the more vibration you're going to get, more potential for resonance or what some people call ping emerging from the case as the vibration, like you get more vibrations getting through into the case, resonating out the sides of the case, that sort of thing. So you have to be more careful of that. Obviously, if you if you make a, a case and shove a bunch of foam in it and make it very stiff, you're not going to get those issues. So wouldn't the poron gaskets absorb those vibrations? Yes. But so the poron pads there under the leaf springs are mainly there to, to stiffen up that leaf spring because it's only made of FR4. So it is quite flexible. Like if, if apiary pushes down on the the threaded standoff ones that don't have the poron, she can, she can, I can bottom the threaded up. standoff ones, yeah. they, they see how they're, they're way more flexible than the other ones. Is there a reason that not all of them have the prawn strips? Yes. I found that the ones with the threaded spaces, they can be left more flexible, I guess. 
because they're just holding the PCB like all the, the, the other ones give all the support those ones are kind of just there so that the PCB doesn't come out <laughs> Oh, this, so with flexible plates, which this sticks. is uh, very flexible because it has some flex cuts. These aren't meant to be flex cuts, I don't think, um, but they work that way. And on top of it, it's FF4 with kind of fat switches like at Inks. Sometimes it can be kind of hard to seat the switches appropriately. So I just use these little popsicle sticks as little shims to keep the plate um, supported and up so I can push switches into it more easily. Okay. Sorry, how many mounting points does this have? So with the Wilbur Weird Flex, it has two. I believe with normal 60s, Wilbur, does it still only have two? What do you mean, mounting points? Like, mounting, I mean, this is supported like, at, at 10 points. It's supported at 10 need... points, but screws go into two points, right? Yeah. Would you mind showing the tray mount position on the plate PCB? Yeah, no problem. So right here and right here are the two holes for the mounting. All right, so this is the salvation. Um, with lubed and film Pinocos on an FR4 plate with Duroc stabilizers lubed with XHT BDZ. Please don't flame me if they have rattle. It's literally like my third time working with it. I'm still trying to figure it out. All right. Salvin hoodie? It is a Salvin hoodie. What the hell? Yeah, you didn't send one for you. What? Yeah, I know. Oh, well, who? Of... Oopsie daisy. <laughs> One thirty four. I don't know anybody who uses right shift. You like that one? He just gave me a face. Has a pinky sound? No, not really. Hit he it harder. Is, he's literally hitting it like as hard as he can. Antares asks, why did you prioritize flex for this keyboard? Well, the original idea was to make a tray case that felt softer. Like my, my issue with tray cases is my issue with not issue, but like tray cases, because they have like four mount points on the side, they, um, they feel stiffer keys around those points sound, uh, feel stiffer and they change the sound having on those keys. So I wanted to make something that avoided that. So adding flexible mounts avoids that issue. And with the the pour on pads underneath, you can actually change where they are placed. So you can have something that's stiffer or flexible, more flexible, depending on your preference. One thing I do want to note um, is this feels a lot softer, I think, versus the thermal, which feels springier. Um, so this doesn't have like the spring that I feel thermal kind of does. 
All right, see you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. And thank you guys again so much for a wonderful subathon. Looking forward to building those protos with you guys. Bye. See ya.